Nah, until you become a Jew or a Christian, Allah gives the answer. Tilka amani yu. It is the wishful thinking. Bakwas hai bakwas. Kul, tell them. Hatu kunhanakum. Inkudum sadiki. Produce your proof if you are truthful. You tell them that what you are speaking if it is the truth, produce your proof. Kul hatu kunhanakum. And they have produced their proof, the Bible, in more than 2,000 different languages. They always say that my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. And they have produced the Bible in more than 2,000 different languages. You name it and it's there. In almost all the languages of the world. What do we have to do? Do we have to follow the Bible, hope, line and sinker? When you ask for a proof, what do you do? You examine the proof. You have to verify the identity. We have to read the scripture. When Allah says you ask them for the proof, Allah does not mean that you should swallow the Bible, hook, line and sinker. You have to analyze it. These Christian missionaries, they read our Quran. They read our Holy Quran and they ask us questions. They ask us questions by saying that do you know it's mentioned in the Holy Quran that Bible is the word of God? And most of the Muslims will say yes. They say, why don't you follow it? They ask you the question. That by name, your last and final prophet, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is only mentioned five times. By name, is only mentioned five times in your Holy Quran. But Jesus peace be upon him, he is mentioned twenty-five times. So who's greater? They don't give you the answer. They let your mind think. They don't give you the answer. They pose the next question. That your Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Did he have a mother and father? He said yes. He had a mother and a father. Did Jesus peace be upon him? Did he have a father? He said no. We agree that he was born without any male intervention. He had a mother, Mother Mary. May Allah be pleased with her. But we believe that he had no father. So who's greater? They ask you the question, but they do not give you the answer. They let your mind answer. They tell you that your last prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did he ever give life to the dead? He might have done other miracles, but did he give life to the dead? You say, yes, we agree, he did several miracles, but we have not heard of any miracle in which he gave life to the dead. Did Jesus, peace be upon him, did he give life to the dead? You say, yes, the Quran mentions that, Be Allah, wake up in the name of Allah. So who's greater? A person who can give life to the dead or a person who can't give life to the dead? That is the question. They use us as punching bags. They use us as dough mats. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, He says, Kul ya ahl al kitab, say, O people of the book, ta'ala wila kalmit in sawa'in, bayna na bayna kum, that come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first thing? Allah na'abuda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi. That we associate your partners with Him. Wala yattakhidha bazan abazan arbaban min dunillah. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fa'inta wallah. If then they turn back. Fa'kulu shadu. Say we bear witness. We are now Muslims. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the Holy Quran is a master key for doing da'wah. If it works for the Ahl Kitab, for the Jews and Christians, use it. If it works for the Hindus, use it. If it works for the Parsis, use it. It's a master key. It will work for each and every non-Muslim. It says, Ta'ala ula kalmit in sawa in bainan wa bainakum that come to common terms as between us and you. The first term is 
Allah na'buda illallah that we worship none but Allah. Mula nushika bihi that we associate the partners with him. Have we told our non-Muslim friends that you should worship only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we told? We go for salah. Alhamdulillah. Many of us pray regularly. Many pray five times a day. We go to the mosque for salah. We go to the masjid. And there we hear our Imam. Many a time we reciting in the Surah class. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah who summoned. Allah the absolute the eternal. Lam yud balam yudah. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufu an ahad. And there is nothing unto him like. Our Imam is reciting in the masjid, in the mosque. Say there is Allah one and only. I want to ask the question, does any of other Muslims, do we say that God is more than one? Do we? No. So why is the Imam telling us that there is Allah one and only? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, Qul, say, Qul huallahu ahad, say he is Allah one and only. Allah is asking you to go and tell those people who do not believe in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is one and only. Allah is Samad. Allah the absolute, the eternal. Lam yalit wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Tell to those people who say that Allah has begotten a son, tell them that Allah begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lo kufu an ahad. And there is nothing like unto him. We read the Salah. Unfortunately, most of us don't understand what the Imam is reading. We, the moment we go out, we forget everything what we have been programmed in our Salah. Allah tells us to say, but we say, why should we say? Why should we interfere with the faith of the other people? People give excuses. They give excuses for not doing da'wah. For example, some may say, Let's see, I don't have enough knowledge of Islam, so I am not the right person for doing da'wah. <laughs> see, da'wah is the job of a person who has a lot of knowledge, alim, who has ill. I don't have enough knowledge. Therefore, when I gain enough knowledge, inshallah, that time I do da'wah. Our beloved Prophet said, anni <laughs> That Propagate even if it be one verse. Even if you know one verse about Islam, you have to say it. You have to propagate it. You have to preach it. And I'm sure that every Muslim at least know few points about Islam. They at least know La ilaha illallah. That there is no God but Allah. They at least know that Allah is one. You have to go and tell to your non-Muslim friends that say there is Allah one and only. He may ask you for proof that how can you prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you don't know how to prove logically, at least do the job, at least tell him. If you do not know the answer, what will you do? You come home and do the homework. When in an examination, if I give an examination, if you don't know the answer and if you fail, what do you do? In your next paper, you see to it, the question you are unable to answer, at least that answer you know very well. And you do your homework, you study harder. So you go home and find out how to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go and tell him. That our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he was the last and final messenger. No one proof, just do your homework. Proof Tell them that the Holy Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they ask, how can you prove it? If you know, you give the answer. If you don't know, come home and do your homework. Alhamdulillah. Now since the media and science and technology have advanced, we don't have to search a lot for these answers. Everything is available on your fingertips. Everything. There are video cassettes by several speakers which are available to us, easily in the market. 
For example, if you want to know how to prove to a non-Muslim about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about Quran is the word of God, there are video cassettes available in which I've given a talk, is the Quran God's word. And there are proved logically.